Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic and today we're going to be talking about the word toxic. This is a word that we've now seen used constantly in the media, specifically when talking about Star Wars fans, but you've also seen it being talked about just any person that just does not agree with the SJW liberal agenda. I know some people might say, oh, you're, you're, you're kind of just minimizing the problem. You're kind of just ignoring other things. And it's no, I'm not. Um, the fact remains that this word is simply used the most by people who have an SJW mindset. Now, people often say, criticize me for using that word and say, oh, that's just an alt-right word or, or something to that effect. And it's like, no, it literally means social justice warrior. So it's not offensive by the way that, you know, just what the actual letters themselves mean. But also, what does that mean? What it means is that it's someone with a liberal bent who is trying to, again, force that liberal ideology on someone else. And one of the ways that they do that is by saying, well, if you don't agree with what I'm saying, you're a racist, racist, you're a sexist, or you are simply toxic. And we see them using this language constantly. And what it does is one, it doesn't engage in dialogue. It doesn't actually have a, it doesn't introduce a desire to have a back and forth conversation. Again, we can disagree over things. We can disagree over whether or not you like The Last Jedi or not, but at least come at me with facts or at least come at me with a supportive, uh, you know, description about why it's a good film instead of just saying oh well it's just because you're an alt-right conspiracy theorist nazi it's like those words don't help especially racist and sexist especially when it's not actually based in anything it's not based in any reality we talked about this in my video yesterday where i said what's really lacking in the sjw mindset is simply common sense instead of looking at a situation and saying this is what we know to be true this is what we know not to be true and there's this gray area in the middle where we honestly don't know sjw's would rather just ignore that area and just say no i'm right about everything and I don't care what you say. In fact, I'm not even going to engage in dialogue with you because you're just a toxic male fanboy. And we've already broken down about why that's not true, especially with those critical of The Last Shot. Again, it is a huge, there is such a variety of uh, racial backgrounds, of, you know, of uh, religious backgrounds, of you know different genders as well. All of us are all so different in, in so many different ways, and not just in those categories. Because again, I hate breaking people down into those categories. That's something where SJWs love to break people down by their race and their gender. And what that does is it just brings brings people in together, or rather it, it brings people in together into those little groups. But what does that do? It isolates them from everyone else. See, that is the, that is the, I feel like that is the ultimate desire for SJWs is that they want everyone to just be a part of their own tiny group and not really have any interaction with one another. And if they say that that's not what they want, well, that's what they're doing. Again, they're trying to put people into these groups and what that ends up doing is just splitting us apart altogether and it just doesn't make any sense and so another one of those words though that is used by SJWs similar to all the words I've mentioned before is the word toxic and so now we have this article right here in front of us this is once again from MovieWeb who we've talked about on this channel before just a really garbage tier show website that just constantly I mean the fact that this is coming across as movie news and really it's just a garbage editorial page is just kind of silly but even so, this is from MovieWeb, this is from an author, Trevor Norkey, and it talks about how James Gunn has told toxic Star Wars fans to seek therapy. So this is already kind of problematic from what James Gunn has said, but let's actually see it. They post the tweets, and they post the things that James Gunn said, so let's see if we can break those down. Maybe there's something to be saved in what James Gunn says, but we shall see. James Gunn, I like his work in Guardians of the Galaxy, so I really hope he doesn't try and fall down this SJW narrative, because that can end up especially if he tries to bring some of that into his films, that could really end up just throwing Marvel off the rails. I mean, we've already kind of seen that worry creep in with Brie Larson talking, <laughs> talking, uh, um, you know, talking about diversity in film criticism when, in re you, know, you know, that's again, them saying, oh, it's just, I don't care. You know, what, that's what she said. I don't care about what some 40 year old white man has to say about my film or what has to say about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for him. And I've already broken down why that's problematic in so many different ways. So please check out that video if you want more on that. But anyway, let's talk about this article here from MovieWise. So it says, Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn has spoken up uh, the constant about the constant hatred coming from the Star Wars fandom that has time and time again proven to be cruel and detrimental to everyone involved with the movies. In response to all this, James Gunn has said that the Star Wars haters need to go into therapy. And again, this is just putting everyone in the same group. Again, this is people, <laughs> this is the generalization that comes from these SJWs is just absolutely insane. Again, they just say, oh, they're all the same. These are all people who are attacking, who are racist, who are sexist, who are alt-right, etc. And that's just not true. Again, when you actually look at the people, when you actually see what's being said, it's so far from what is actually true. And so once again, we see either James Gunn is off his rocker here or MovieWeb is off their rocker. I think maybe it might be a mixture of both. Because when it comes to, uh, again, talking about cruel and detrimental to everyone, cruel Star Wars fans, is saying, yourself, okay, so just because I'm critical of a film, if just because I'm critical of a character, that makes me toxic? That, that makes me cruel? I thought that makes me a human person who has an opinion. 
I mean, again, are there cruel people out there? Are there sick people out there? Yeah, on every single side, there's a very, very, very small number of people, less significantly less than 1% of any group that is like that. But that's not what they're talking about here. They're basically lumping everyone together. So this was in response to the recent revelation from Jar Jar Binks actor Ahmed Best, who revealed that the hatred he received for his role as Jar Jar Binks in the prequel trilogy almost led him to committing suicide. And again, I am one of those people that will say, I don't think anyone should be attacked personally. If you are attacking someone personally, I have a problem with that. If you're attacking a character or attacking a story or attacking someone's opinion on something, that is very different than, than attacking an actual person. And so again, I feel really bad for him and I'm so glad that he has been able to, to find the light. I mean, he posted a picture recently with uh, with his child and I thought it was just really just really moving and it was re very positive and so I really appreciate that so I hate now that we have articles that are now trying to use that for their own agenda and their own narrative it's really sick that they're doing that all right so they continue on saying it was a truly tragic story that spawned the senseless hatred Star Wars fans who took the poor quality of the movies as a personal attack though the prequel movies may not have been as great as the original trilogy it was still no excuse to bombard the Jar Jar actor with senseless hatred to the point of nearly killing himself and again I agree with you there for anyone that was doing that I totally disavow them I totally can condemn what they did but again we don't because during that time especially the internet was very early on it was a lot harder to really keep track of what was going on what was being said we don't really know exactly what happened I mean, I'm not saying that he wasn't attacked because again we know that everyone gets attacked on the internet every single person who has a public profile me included as small as I am uh, you know only 200 followers on Twitter a thousand subscribers on YouTube even I get attacked randomly by people so it does happen and it's it sucks it's stupid and I again I feel for him so I'm so glad he's been able to get himself out of it. But let's go on with what this article is trying to say. Ahmed Best wasn't the first actor to receive this kind of backlash. Star Wars, The Last Jedi's Daisy Ridley and Kelly Mu Chan have both erased their social media accounts as a response to the constant hatred that they received online for how their movie turned out. Okay, this is garbage. This is, once again, this is ignoring reality. This is ignoring the facts. Daisy Ridley, why did she get off social media? It was because she posted something about gun control and then couldn't keep up with the argument and couldn't actually come up with a response and got got bombarded with people who were trying to say, why are you saying this? You know, what is your opinion on this? And yeah, were there probably some disgusting people in that group? Yeah, sure. Because again, they're everywhere. They're going to be in every conversation. But to say that Daisy really got off because just because people didn't like her in the movie, that is totally disingenuous and that is not based in reality. What is the reality? She posted something about gun control and that is when she got got bombarded on her social media account. So that's da Daisy Ridley. Again, she was not driven off social media for hatred over a movie. Again, it was about her stance on gun control. Again, again, if you're criticizing someone's opinion, that's very different than attacking the person. For anyone that was attacking her personally, I disavow that. And then Kelly Marie Tran. I've talked about this several times on this channel. She has never confirmed that that is the reason why she got off social media. In fact, what we know about social media, especially Instagram, which is the account we're talking about here, we know that if you just temporarily delete the account, that it erases all your information. So honestly, it could have just been that she was going off to film episode nine and she decided to take a break and it deleted everything. But once again, no one's covering that. No one's talking about that. Why? Because they don't want to. They don't want to use common sense. They don't want to, you know, stay in the facts. They would rather just spin their narrative, spin their web, try and make the reality, make everyone else perceive reality the way that they want it to be perceived instead of actually living in the real world. So, I mean, these people at MovieWeb and Ryan Johnson, Kathleen Kennedy, all these people, all these people who follow this SJW mindset, again, not liberal mindset, again, SJW mindset, they are just entirely in their own tiny little bubbles, and when someone tries to burst it, they just go out in all attack mode and call people out. All right, this goes on to say, even Mark Hamill, who returned to play Luke Skywalker in Last Jedi, received a lot of hatred online. Hamill has recently revealed that he isn't an, uh, he isn't open to appearing in any future franchises simply because he doesn't want to be put in that situation again. And again, Mark Hamill, I think, has gotten a lot more love than hatred because we love his character. We just am not a huge we're not huge fans, or at least a lot of people aren't huge fans of his political you know his political messaging. I mean, that's the reason why he gets criticized or that he gets attacked. Again, there's a difference between attacking someone personally and criticizing someone's opinion. They are two totally separate things. So if he put something on Twitter and people criticize that, that's not an attack. That's someone who is public putting something into the public sphere and people responding to it. That is very different than someone attacking someone at a personal level, which again, I totally disavow, but most of these cases, for the most part, most people that are being talked about here simply just did not like either the character, did not like what was said by, a, by their political standpoint or something to that effect. All right, so 
Let us go on from there. James Gunn responded to this on Twitter recently. While Gunn has made a number of social media posts defending the cast of Star Wars and shunning the internet trolls over the past six weeks, six months, his latest tweet has, take to, has to take the gold for his best statement yet. Here's what he had to say. So he says, people responding to this post saying, yeah, it wasn't the actor's fault. It was the writers are missing the point. Critique it. Don't like it. But spewing hate and bile at individuals just doing their best to tell a story, even if the story sucks, is lame. Don't watch it. Star Wars or any movie may be important to you, but it doesn't belong to you. If your self-esteem depends on how good you think the current Star Wars is, or your child is ruined because you don't like something to uh, something in a movie, go to therapy. Okay, so now I do know that James Gunn is now totally jumping on. I mean, maybe he's already done so already. I haven't really been following James Gunn on Twitter because I just like his movies, but now this makes me hope that he never tries to bring this nonsense into, into the actual movie itself because, again, do we agree? I agree that people who are attacking someone personally that maybe they need to go to therapy. If they're attacking someone personally, yes, but that's not who he's talking about here. He is lumping everyone in, you know, into the same boat, and that's just not based in reality. Most people are not the ones who are attacking someone personally, the spewing of hate and bile. And also, the best line here, the one that that always gets to me is but it doesn't belong to you. Well, last time I checked, buying a ticket to a movie, buying merchandise makes you a customer of that product, and therefore, if you have an opinion, that opinion should probably not only be said, but also should probably be heard. Any business that does something that fans hate is going to lose out on money and will be <laughs> would do best to listen to the fans. That's all that's going on here is we are simply putting our opinion out there. We are saying, hey, we don't like this direction. We want something new, and that's all we're doing. Again, for the most part, all of us are very commonsensical people people. We're actually very positive people. If you watch any of my live streams, it is always very, very positive. We have a lot of fun. Watch any of the streams on Geeks and Gamers, on you know Ivan Ortega's channel, Jesse Milestone, Anna, that Star Wars girl. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I always forget because there's just such a long list. You know, we are very, we're very positive people. We want Star Wars to be good. That's just the whole thing. We want Star Wars to be great. We want it to be an amazing property. The problem is, is that the people currently running it do not know what they're doing, are not doing a very good job, and we're making our voices heard. And yet, when we do that, what are we Label. We're, ra we're, we're labeled as not only racist and sexist, but now as toxic as well. And that word is just so ridiculous because it just totally it undermines what the actual term means, and you can't just lump everybody into the same group with that. So he goes on to say, while James Gunn's Twitter comment may seem a little harsh, it's not nearly as harsh as the numerous comments the Star Wars trolls have made over the years. While it's, again, very few Star Wars trolls. Again, you're, you are saying that, but what you what you mean and what you're trying to do is convey that every person, geeks and gamers, Ivan Ortega, me, everyone is all a part of this group, that we're all these hateful people that are trying to attack someone personally. No. We just think, again, we just think like that we want a better product. And for us saying, oh, you're saying, oh, you're saying to fire Kathleen Kennedy, you're, you want someone to lose their job. Well, shouldn't someone who just lost a film or a company – over $200 million? Shouldn't that person be fired? That's just, again, using common sense. And also, that is the person who has greenlit decisions that have pretty much destroyed the narrative of, of these Star Wars films lately. So I think that's a pretty valid opinion. Again, I was able to back that up with facts and statistics. What are you able to back it up with? Not much. And if you try and say, oh, well, look at The Force Awakens, etc. Yeah, but look at how the down... Look, I mean... You can look at The Force Awakens and making $2 billion, but then look at every other film since that time and it's been going down because now they're starting to lose money and it's a very good chance that Episode Nine might not even break even at this point. I'm just saying, like, I'm sorry, we're basing our numbers in reality. Where are you? All right, goes on to say, while it's fair to say that Star Wars Last Jedi and Star Wars Phantom Menace had a lot of issues to them, there are numerous other ways to express how much you dislike the movie without cruelly bullying and threatening the cast to the point of suicide. Most people are not doing that. There's a very small number of people. Now, if someone lets a small number of people get to them, uh, I mean, that's that is on that person. But again, I'm not I'm again, I'm not trying to justify it. I'm not saying that the people who are doing the bullying are off the hook. No, those are sick people. And I agree. They do need therapy. But at the same time, when you put yourself out there into the public sphere and you expect not to be attacked, you're not just basing yourself in reality. The fact is, and it sucks that people are nasty, that there are certain people out there, a very small number of people who just are unhappy with their life, who can only find joy in trying to bring others down. And those are the people who need help. Don't try and put everyone else into the same group. That is the biggest problem with what you're talking about here. At the end of the day, Star Wars is just a movie series, and the quality of these movies really shouldn't define your life. And then it goes on and then puts the actual tweets themselves. And here's the other thing, too. There, that last line especially. At the end of the day, Star Wars is just a movie series, and the quality of these movies really shouldn't define your life. Here is... The problem with this statement. So I agree with you that are there more important things in the world? Absolutely. Again, when you break things down at a very basic level, there are so many more important things going on in the world. But here's the problem with that statement. 
Because there are so many other important things going on in the world, there are also a lot of things that affect us in a very negative way. There are things that bring us down. There are things that that hurt us. And sometimes what we need is an escape. Sometimes what we need is to be able to escape into a property, into a story, into a movie. I shared this in one of my last videos where I said, the way that I've, that I've escaped all my life is in film. I love film. Someone with ADD, I need to be able to focus on something. And movies have always been that thing that I've been able to put my heart and soul into. So I know what it's like to love a movie. I know what it's like to love a franchise. So when I hear these people who are so upset about what's going on with Star Wars, I feel for them. And you can say, oh, they, they, they need therapy. Well, you know what? They very well might. But attacking them and calling them racist and sexist when in reality all they want is to love something, to escape in something, that is what's toxic. You are what's toxic. Movie web, you are what's toxic. Kathleen Kennedy, Ryan Johnson, James Gunn, all of these knuckleheads, y'all are the ones that are being toxic right now. Y'all are the ones that are attacking people and bringing people down by lumping everyone in with all these other extremists out there. <sighs> all right, so what did y'all guys think? Did you like this video? Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Share this video as well. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I just hit 1,000 subscribers yesterday, and I'm so very thankful. I have a marathon three-and-a-half-hour live stream that I did last night where I'm just in my Chewbacca onesie, and it's a lot of fun. It's a really good time. We go strong all the way till the very end, and uh, I do live streams almost every day on this channel. I won't be doing one tonight, but if you do like this content, please hit that subscribe and share it with anybody else that you think might like it. I greatly appreciate that. Have a great day, guys, and as always... God bless.